for being here. Welcome to Tell Me What Your God Looks Like by Angel Edwards. My name is Arian Wilkerson. I am one of the curators here with the Malcolm X Bex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Black Aesthetics. This is our 12th Black Aesthetics programming out of 22 performances here. So give it up for that. And for this performance, Angel would like to tell you a story. But the story starts at our historic entrance outside at 55 Washington Square South. So you can take your things, you can leave your things, you can take your food. But without further ado, please follow me. Come on down,
contemporary pop music. Please welcome first time diva, Rochelle Ferrell. Bless you, thank you. What a warm welcome. You're trying to make me sing. I had plans to sing, but I'm just very sang now. You know, when I think about it, I started in the church as a as a as a, as a, as a grandmother used to take me to church back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I used to sing for the Lord, and I used to sing in the adult choir, and I loved the Lord with all my heart, all my heart, all my heart, all my heart. time I was nine years old, I was gung-ho, and my grandmother even said to me one day, she said, you know, baby, God's going to use you one day. And I, I didn't know what she meant. What a warm welcome. But I, I make me like sing. The I had plans to sing, but I was the to sing. My mother and father and my five brothers and my little sister, we moved from Tulsa to California. My, my dad's job has transferred him out here. And by the time I was 12 years old, I found myself in the nightclubs in Los Angeles. My mom and dad used to go to the clubs on the weekends. They didn't know the Lord Jesus. Grandma wasn't around anymore, so we just quit going to church. <coughs> in the nightclubs at 12 years old, and that was the worst place and the last place I needed to be. But I had a praying grandmother. By the time I was 13 years old, I had recorded my first single and began to open up for people like Stephen. Things begin to happen. Things begin to happen. A trap set. He was gonna set me up. Cause see, I like, I like the money. I was making a lot of money. And I like the glitter. And I like the applause because that thing I love. I was 16 years old, I had had a baby out of wedlock, and by the time I was 17 years old, I left home and joined the cast of hair, and I began to travel all across the country. I was making more money than my mom and dad put together by then, and things were looking pretty good. To the then I was introduced to marijuana. Devil had a trap set. Next thing I know was pills, pills to get up in the morning. Pills to go to bed. I had plans to sing, but I'm the very same. Ran around with a lot of people who had no business being with And one day I was introduced to Temporary pop cocaine and that's true. Please welcome first time All drugs to Rochelle are spirit. Rep. This cocaine became the best. I'm not glorifying him, I'm just letting him know that I don't belong to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been set free. And I traveled with people, worked with Shaka Khan, and then I happened into into Neil and all the people in the studios, and I was my job, and I was quick, and quick. I could demand double, triple scale, and I went to work, and I was high every day. The devil was trying to kill me. I had a praying grandmother, never turned back. Hallelujah.
it will never lose its power. One time when I was in Houston, Texas, I met a man there and I was getting ready to go on the road with Shaka Khan. No. There was a group going on the road with us, Heat Wave, and no. they had a man working with them and he was doing their lights. No. And he, I didn't know this, but I met him on the road and he was a nice guy and you never would know it to look at him, but he was also, not only was he a light director, but he was a cocaine dealer. The so devil knows how to really do. So we began to be friends and we began to date and, and uh, you know I began to get all the cocaine. I want it for free. I'm gonna be no one for free. But we came home, me and this is young man, and we began to live together. And he was still selling drugs, and I began to make drops for him. I was dropping off cocaine, making a lot of foolish uh, turns in my life. And so I began to do this spot down. I was going to hell. One night as I was getting loaded, I began to pass out. Hit it, Days later, that I was watching Christian television. What do I think? I think Grandma that I tells me she was laying on her face at this time. Time. She had been fasting for two weeks and just called and on the next Save to my granddaughter. Up to something. Up to something. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Christian TV one night and it, and it was as if God Himself said, That's enough. And He rebuked the devil from me long enough for me to make an intelligent decision. And I said, Jesus, I know you're real. If you'll just take all of this away from me, take all of the drugs, take them away. And I want you to know that instantly I was set free. And I traveled with people and I 
worked with Shaka Khan and Rufus and I worked with Captain and Tennille and all know that I don't belong to you. All around me. Oh, that's good. The devil had a trap set that Jesus loved me. I didn't know it then. When I was 16 years old, I had had a baby out of wedlock. And by the time I was 17 years old, I went on for about 12 years of my life and I traveled with people and I worked with Shaka Khan and Rufus and I worked. One time when I was in Houston, Texas, I met a man there and I was getting ready to go on the road with Shaka Khan and there was a group going on the road with us, Heat Wave, and they had a man working with them and he was doing their lights and he, I didn't know this, but I met him on the road and was a, was a, we wouldn't know it to look at him, but he was also, not only was a light director, but he was a cocaine dealer. One time when I was in Houston, Texas, I met. One time when I was in Houston, Texas, I. But we came home, me and this young man, and we began to live together. And all of my bodily fluids were doing their own thing, and I was dying. All of my bodily fluids were doing their own thing, and I was dying. But I had a praying grandmother. A lot of foolish uh, turns. A lot of foolish uh, turns in my life, and my life. And if you want, you can read along with me or join me as I read the land acknowledgement. We gather today on physical space that stands on the ancestral land of the Munsi Lenape tribe of the Lenny Lenape people. We acknowledge these people of the stony country and decry the unjust taking of their Lenape hoking the unfulfilled promises of United States treaties granting land access and the still unresolved traumas of forced migration. We pray alongside all the churches in the United Church of Christ on this Sunday of special emphasis to support more than 20 UCC congregations on reservations and in the multi-tribal church, we acknowledge and affirm native values and indigenous cultures while holding space for the myriad authentic and post-colonial Indian expressions of faith in life. today on physical space stands on the ancestral land Munsi Lenape tribe of the Lenape 
we acknowledge these people of the stony country and decry the unjust taking of their Lenape poking, the unfulfilled promises of United States treaties granting land access and the still unresolved traumas of forced migration. We pray alongside all the churches in the United Church of Christ on this Sunday of special emphasis to support more than 20 UCC and in the multi-climate church, we acknowledge and affirm native values and indigenous culture while holding space for the myriad authentic and post-colonial Indian expressions of faith and life. Amen. Thank you for that. And now at this time, we will move right into our prelude, which is based on November sunset and it will be composed by
Now I lay me down to sleep. And if I die before I wake, I hope my back never touches the earth again. I hope hands reach out from the reefs and my mouth gets so full of water that my lips start to form a different tongue. One that is always full and always fluid, forever waiting in transformation. I hope the muscles in my back shoot ripples across waves. And if you are good and a diligent student, love is not a gift, it is a diploma. The waves and I giggle too often with each other. Passengers on the ferry wonder when my skin has started to drip blue. In his she, face, she in giggles. his right hand, he held seven stars. And coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. But when I hear them together, all I can do is pull the quilt over my head and finger my little button in titties and cry. You do not deserve love just because you want it. You can only earn by practice and careful contemplation. Fine with me, I say. I can't get over having a house. Soon as Daisy leave me with the keys, I run from one room to another. Imagine a picture frame Look that at is this. really a window. I say to Suge. Weathered white, wide open. Your loving sister. In the background, Steely. dark arms flex to a collar note. Blow it, strum it, beat it to the cut. In a Louisiana insane asylum where he died I fell at because his feet. destitute I in still 1931. Dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. Let's I was begin dead. with the window. And now look. Weathered white, wide open. In the metaphysics of Trethway's poem, this window is a wormhole bridging Bolden's life world and whatever space time you inhabit. You do not deserve love regardless of the suffering you have endured. God said, I will pour out my spirit upon some flesh. And the congregation screamed back, oh. And then she came right back in. You do not deserve love because somebody did you wrong. You do not deserve love just because you want it. You have to practice God. You have to think God carefully. You talk and write all, he said all flesh. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. You do not deserve love regardless of the suffering you have endured. You do not deserve love because somebody did you wrong. You do not deserve love just because you want it. You can only earn by practice and careful contemplation the right to express it and you have to learn how to accept it. I'm thinking again about Essex. This time my attention is piqued by his less remarked upon story of sexual initiation in which one of the rituals in his southeast in his DC right hand, he held oasis seven of stars. strivers was sex with George. Like the sun shining in all of its brindlance. My initiation into homo sex was guided by the hands of a white man. I know you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Heaven was an infusion, aromatherapy to the nervous system, easing the secret of chronic alone, all the vastness of skin burdened by touch waiting to be known. You have forsaken the love you had at first. And just like that, the Lord of Good Pussy turned into a weathercock and then was gone. The swiftness of the disappearance called, con caused confusion at first. One, no one knew if the performance was really over, so no one clapped or moved or said a word. As they all stared into the tenderness of cosmic poetry the Lord had made of this thing called night. 
In time, the spell was broken and the club goers began to move about and talk among themselves. I hope my hips sink so far that the water and I never stop making love. I hope we never stop making love. You do not deserve love regardless of the suffering you have endured. You do not deserve love because if somebody did you wrong, you when I die, I hope I get God. buried under 6,000 black slaves. You have to slaves. practice God. I hope their weight Which crumbles say, so deep their spine God. begins to melt onto mine. I hope your fingers intertwine forming a vine underneath beds of soil never letting go. I hope our tongues act as fertilizers for the whispers of the secret pathways to freedom. I think I heard her say, The waves and I giggle too often with each other. This way. The waves and I giggle too often with each other. This way, don't forget. When I die, I don't hope. Don't forget your running shoes. And when I die, I hope. I have a closing benediction. Would you all be willing to repeat after me? Can we just practice? Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a good practice round. OK. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm here. I'm here. The bitch. Bitch. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Thank you. Thank you. Bitch. Bitch. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can you just kiss your finger? Just kiss it like a. Place it to the faraway sky. Can you like rub the cloud? Just rub it. Say, oh yes. Oh yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'll never really feel you. I'll never really feel you. And I thank you. And I thank you. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thank you. Thank That's you. all. <laughs> <laughs>
tell me what your God looks like. So um, before we go, I have, well, Angel has 38 packaged seeds that were wildflowers that were grown in this very zone, in this Greenwich Village zone. So these are special flowers that you can, seeds that you can take home and plant. The paper was made out of hibiscus. It's dyed in hibiscus. It's dyed in hibiscus, so it smells really good. It has all of Angel's incredible nourishing energy. I'm gonna place it right over here. Please feel free to take one. We don't have enough for all, so share, take one, don't take two. Um, and make some noise one more time for Angel, please. I just wanna say, Angel, I find you to be just so luxuriously full and the work that you do for community and for folks and the mutual aid that you give, like I wrote on Instagram, the mutual aid that you do is serious. It's not just on Instagram, it's how you live your life, it's how you talk to people, it's how you navigate the world, it's how you give. And I'm so, 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 so honored to be able to give you the opportunity to be here at Judson, to be a part of the historic lineage here, and for many more things to come. So if you ever need anything, you know, I am, I am all yours. Um, this event, these events that we've been doing, these black aesthetics are important. We give 22 artists a first time performance here at the Judson. They get $1,000, they get access to the space. Um, and they get to continue their work and to be a part of this historic legacy. They get lighting, they get full video. They, they leave with their video, they leave with their check, you know? <laughs> Things that we find so difficult, you know, to do. You know what I mean? Like that's really hard to do, you know? Malcolm and I really worked so hard to make sure that these performances are special and come from a place of heart and love. So I just wanna say thank you so much for coming today and thank you so much for being here. We have two chair racks over there. So if you could do us a favor and place your chairs back, that'll save us a lot of work. Um, and if you wanna stay, uh, we have the Black Trans Liberation Kitchen happening next door with Queen Jean. There's some more food over there. They're going to be voguing here at 10 o'clock. So if you want to get the Vogue down, you can stay and stay around. There will be some voguing going on over here. Um, and make sure you pour into Angel. Ask Angel what does Angel need. Give them some money because art does not grow on trees. It goes on knees. So please give some money. Please give some money if you can. Um, and yeah, anything you would like to say? That's pretty much it? Yes, so our next one, uh, we have Crackhead Barney. We have um, another UArts alumni, Chloe Marie, if you know her work, Chloe Marie will be here as well. Um, and then we have uh, Reason and Amina will be coming here in June, so I'm super excited for that. And then in the fall, we have, we have Elliot Reed, who's also here, so we are so excited for that. Yeah, and look out for some of our larger programs. This Black Aesthetics will be happening for the next three years and, and even more, so we're gonna be doing this. So please message us, feel free to email malcolm at judsoncommons.org or arian at judsoncommons.org. If, if you're interested in performing, send us your work, we would love to see it. Thank y'all, have an incredible day. Put your chairs away, thank you.